Can y'all make some noise for our guests? Well, Carter, please make some noise, make some noise. So what's up, man? Welcome to the city. Um, you, you come here quite often. Hey, can we can we get some uh, sound for his mic, please? I mean, I oh, know, nah, nah, we need it, we need it, we need it, we need it. We we gonna we, me and you gonna need it, right? Cause like, yo yo yo, turn them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said say something? Yeah. Oh. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that, man. Technical difficulties. We put these together uh, in two days, so like, bear with us, man. Um, first of all, like I said, you you know strangers to Baltimore. Right. You got a, a lot of, well, a couple Baltimore artists on your, on your tour, the Ralph Carter tour. Yeah, they here with me. They right there. What's up, fellas? How y'all feeling, man? What's up? Give it up for the, for the guys that's here, man. Yeah, Breeze A, White Boy, Fraser, so let's um, let's let's go to the tour first of all. Uh, you you just put this together like this was your first one? Nah, uh, we've been doing this since October 2017. Okay, and how how, how did it go the last time last time around? Uh, we just ended in DR, so you know that was our first international stop, which was big for us. Um, but it was just something that I wanted to put together, you know, to give upcoming artists an opportunity, you know, because I feel like a lot of people don't. Right. So, I mean, why not? So, when you say opportunity, opportunity for what, though? Like, I mean, you know, to showcase their talent. I mean, aside from actually performing, we do a very intensive workshop about the business of music. No, definitely, and I wanted to touch on that. Um, I was looking at a couple of your interviews, and it's it's clear, before y'all do it, y'all do a Q&A. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And y'all, do, y'all also we do, do, like... We do a workshop, and then we do a Q&A. Right, exactly. So, I want to get into the workshop a little bit. Right. If we can get, it, get into a little bit, you talk about some things that the artist should know about. Like um, registering your music. Um, yeah, registering your music, copywriting it. You know, um, what your pro is, whether it's BMI, ASCAP, Sound Exchange. You know, it's just literally everything. Because I feel like a lot of artists, they just know how to make music. Right. They don't know the business behind it and the paperwork that needs to be in place to actually put a song out. So when you're making music and you um you you're looking to put a song out professionally and get paid for it, what are the like the first three steps that you want to do after making a song? Um, get a producer agreement. Okay. You know, that's a piece of paper um, that the producer signs telling you that you own this beat now. Um, you know, registering the song, because you can, if you don't register the song, we can't find it. You right. know, you won't get paid for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, putting it out. So when you when you talk about registering a song, because these are things that some of these people probably not heard about. I know I haven't heard about actually registering a song myself. So when you when you sign up for like BMI or something, you register the song. So you have an artist page, and when you put the song out, you know you got to register it. You get a um, it's a code, it's a uh, IRSC code that you get, and that's how you identify. Just like when you come shopping, and they scan a barcode that tells you what that item is. So every song has a code that lets you know where to find that song at. So if it's playing on iTunes or even, you know, get it registered with BDS so that when they play on the radio, you could get counted for spin instead of just putting it out on, like, SoundCloud and then a DJ grabs it and play it on the radio. You don't get no spins for that. No, definitely. Well, well first of all, man, we appreciate you. I hope, I hope artists coming with your notepads, man, make sure y'all taking notes because I definitely want you guys to learn something. It's not just an interview between uh, me and Ro Carter. It's definitely a learning experience for all of you guys. I want you guys to, to really know this and know what's going on behind the scenes and um, just... Continue talking about the the, uh, the Real Carter culture tour. We're going to get into the, the album in a little bit, but I just want to continue talking about the uh, That's cool. the, the, the Real Carter culture tour. Right. How many places did you go this time around? How many how many cities did you visit? Um, I think we did like seven or eight from September to December. Which, what cities did you go to? You don't know. You're supposed to know this. Can somebody help? What did I uh, help him out, man? What's I, I know. Hold up. There we go. <laughs> we went to Boston, okay. uh, Minneapolis, DR, Texas. Charlotte, South Carolina. South we didn't go to Texas. No, we did not. We went to Texas in like March. That was before. All right. South by Southwest, <laughs> Memphis. Um, I mean, I'm going to say all the tour stops Toronto, New York, LA, Atlanta. Cincinnati, Ohio, Philly, Miami, Orlando. So when you when you're looking for artists to put on a tour, like I'm trying to understand, what, not of course they want to get exposure, but are we are we trying to get these artists signed? Because I know I'm pretty sure when people see Bro Carter, they see uh, like Rock Nation, A and R, they see Jay Z, I mean, nephew, and like I'm trying to get signed. No, it's not. 
no way you can sign 30 artists. I mean, but the ones that have the most talent, I mean, yeah, it's something we can talk about. If I feel like I found something special to bring up to the label, then I will. The tour is more so about, you know, allowing these artists. Think about it. Think about how many artists. How many artists in here know each other? I mean, it's Baltimore. I feel like we, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of we kind of tight. We probably don't agree with each other all the time, but we we know each other. Okay, with that, but even just think about it, if you go to a city like Minneapolis, there's so many artists out there, but they don't even know each other. Right, and they're in see the same that. city, so it's about networking. It's more so about actually um, growing as an artist as opposed to trying to get a record deal. Right, you know, because you can get a record deal and still not know anything, because the label's not going to teach you nothing. So all the stuff I'm literally doing is giving you inside game that the label's not going to tell you. they just going to tell you get in the studio and return with an album. And then they'll let the A&R do whatever they do. But the artists that don't get signed, they don't know to do this stuff. No, definitely. And um, I see you doing, you doing this by yourself. There's it's, it's no affiliation with Rock Nation. It's just Ro no, Carter and no, your team. You're right. So a lot of times, well, in the new age, you see, and you, it's funny because we just seen a uh, Soulja Boy uh, interview on a Breakfast Club talking about how he created this new age of music and like, like people was hating. I feel like we can agree to that people was hating on him saying he was like he was killing hip hop at one at one point. But now I see it's like people are more independent now. People are focused more on YouTube and streaming now than they were before. So it's kind of like if if you somebody that work with a major company, you ain't doing it with the major company. Why do artists still want to get signed by these major companies? I don't know. Ex artists. I mean, I just. Honestly, like I'm, I'm trying to come, I'm trying to come at it I from an artist. I think it's more so for the, um, the resources. You know, a lot of these artists, you know, they don't have the money to. All right, they got the money to go in the studio, but they don't got the money to pay for the marketing and do everything else that the label could do for you, or even the resources. Mm -hmm. Like an artist in here can't call DJ Mustard and just get a beat just because you know. But if you sign to a label, you know, it's more they'll be more prone to working with you because no, they know that the money is actually there. Okay, so and. Moving on to the, uh, well, first of all, something that stood out to me was when you were talking about the tour, it was nobody from New York on the tour? Huh? It was nobody from New York? I seen you was talking to, um, was it Punch? You was like, you, you wasn't dealing with no New York artists at the time or something like that. I'm like, no, what? No, 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 no. It was New York. I mean, it was like a couple New York artists on the tour. But it's not like a tour where we take artists and just travel with them. It's more a showcase tour. So we announce the city and then people within that city sign up for it. It's not like... We take, I mean, we got featured artists, of course, who travel with us, but everything else is like me coming to Baltimore and putting out a link out there and all these Baltimore artists sign up. Okay. We, but, the, I mean, the difference between what we do and what other showcases do, I don't know if y'all familiar with, like, New York showcases, but a lot of them charge you, like, $500 to come perform and this, that, and third, and they say somebody's going to win something. I don't believe in that because, first of all, I don't believe in, um, I don't believe in competition when you're on the grind, you know? I don't believe that we should put this guy against this guy and see who wins. I feel like everybody has a shot. But it's also, they're not really caring about the talent. The people that put these showcases on, they'll take your $500 knowing you don't have talent and let you perform. And then I feel like they waste our time, us as a &Rs who want to actually come do our job and look for good, you know, good music. And they just take, you rap? No, I don't rap. So imagine you signing up knowing you don't rap. They'll take your money though. Right. I there's mean, no, there's no background. Why would I sign up if, if, if? I mean, as a, I mean, of course you believe in yourself, but as the person doing the showcase, you need to. It's your, it's also your credibility on the line. No, definitely. So if I come to a showcase with you, and the talent is whack, next time you call me, I'm not coming back for what? Mm -hmm. So I feel like they just take these artists, and then they also take five hundred dollars from all these people, and only one person win. I'll be mad as shit. Not right. Like. Five hundred dollars for nothing. I don't get nothing out of this. So they charging you niggas five hundred dollars for showcases. I mean, I might, I might have to up my prices because I have a showcase myself. And like, if they charge you five hundred dollars, then I, I mean, it to... might be more. I don't know the real price. I just thought that was a good price point. <laughs> Sheesh, I'm not paying five hundred dollars for no showcase. I'm sorry, that's that's crazy. I mean, especially if nothing's guaranteed. I'm not guaranteed to get anything for the five hundred. Right. But a three minute performance? No, nah, definitely. I don't. I don't want it. I feel like I'm selling myself short, man. I had to showcase niggas charging five hundred dollars. Totally, he totally missed the whole point. No, no, nah, nah, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, man, I get it. So, man, uh, you, you spoke about being an A and R, and if you come and you don't see good talent, you ain't coming back no more, right? I mean, I'm not gonna deal with that person who put the showcase together. No, nah, definitely. So, you, you, 
You bring up the word hating. That's why I don't do them no more. Mm-hmm. Because that's why I decided to do my own thing. Because I feel like we handpick everybody. Like these guys was handpicked. Before you even pay or do anything, we tell you to send your music so we can listen to it and decide if we even want you a part of the tour. As opposed to just letting a thousand people sign up and they get to perform. Mm. And this showcase would be long as shit. No, definitely. I just went to one other day, that shit was five hours. No, niggas definitely trying. And the talent was bad. Right. Yeah. Now you definitely got some good talent. I can speak. Uh, white boy Fraser, he did. He did uh, one of my showcases, and he definitely came and shut it down, man. I listened to, I listened to a couple of strikes on a No Handout album, so it's crazy, it. uh, man. So uh, No Handouts, man. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Thank you. Thank you like you like the DJ Khaled because you just see. I mean, <laughs> I mean I you see Rob Carter, and it's like, okay, it's this nigga about the rap, man. No, 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 no. I'm not even on it. Never hit my voice on anybody's song. Uh, uh, my uh, my favorite one on there is sorry, sorry, bro, sorry, bro. My favorite song on there is uh, way too much. I think is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit crazy. Uh, yeah. what's the guy name? Uh, official B free. He from uh Detroit. Nah, definitely, man. You dealing with uh, you dealing with a couple uh, you got somebody from Detroit, somebody from Philly. You dealing with? I got a couple people from Philly. Uh, Mike Dow, uh, R&B singer, Orgy Jackson. And these kids, L&D Grader. You got somebody from uh, VA too that you're dealing with? Yeah, me a driver. How how? How are these guys working together when they when they in the studio? Like, how was the energy? I mean, that shit was a boot camp. Like, it was the <laughs> niggas was on like twelve hour lockdown. Prison. Literally, we went to see. <laughs> now nah, we went to Atlanta to do it. Um, and I just believe in like just from being around like the old Rockefeller, where you know, like back in the day at Rockefeller, they used to have like niggas who would like try to come and get signed. Like, Hova make them battle like Freeway and Beans and them. And it's like, why you put me up against these guys? These guys are on already. So I was like, yo, this is going to be a competition. We got this one record um, where I put the beat on, everybody liked it. I'm like, we don't got enough for 15 niggas. So, mm. you know, everything was just a competition, you know, just to bring out the best in everybody. No, I like that, man. Uh, one thing, I, uh, another thing I noticed, you got the, the Do Say Friday podcast. Right. And all the interviews I see, like, you mad chill, like, you back. And, like, you, you right. just be chilling. But, Not and, uh, yesterday's episode. Say, no, but no, in a podcast, you be turned up, though. In the interviews, you be chilling, like, you be, be trying to talk to niggas. I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, but in a podcast. Because I'm not an interviewer. That's why I don't, that's, that wasn't the whole point of the start the podcast, right? No, not the podcast. I'm saying when you do interviews, right? When, when I see no, your interviews. Yeah, I'm telling you. All right. People are asking me questions. I'm not a journalist. So, like, right now, I couldn't do what you're doing. Because okay. I really, I mean, I formulate questions different. So, when we have guests and shit, I just be like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Because the whole point of the podcast was to just get drunk and talk shit. Right. <laughs> once it got to, um, once it got to um, asking motherfuckers questions, I'm like, I'm bowing. Now nah, I'm gonna just sit here. You gonna do the honors? You gonna pull up? Huh? You gonna pull up? You gonna do the honors? They already started out. You look. You fucking up. Damn, man. Like I'm thinking, you supposed to. Yeah, you come to the city, you pull up, man. Sheesh, you gonna try to turn up. So, uh, I ain't no fucking bottle girl. <laughs> 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 so niggas, niggas can't show love. When, I mean, I'm sorry. If I come to New York, I'm up. If I got the bottle, I'm up. Yo, what's up? You want something to drink? I mean, I mean, maybe it might be you but, from Brooklyn, right? If you come to New York, you're it, gonna be the hospitable one. Nah, I, listen. If I come to the city, I got a bottle. What's up, bro? Y'all, y'all invite me to your house? Yeah, why this not? Was I didn't bring this. So you should have opened this and poured it. Man, listen. Somebody from your team, open the door. God damn it. No, somebody from your team handed this to me when I walked in. Oh, okay. Well, somebody from my team, thank you. I appreciate that because I ain't paid for it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I I, I got you. If it was my team, I got you. I got you. I got you. Let's talk about the podcast, man. uh, You said it was just a bunch of, well, it was was two of y'all. When we first started. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, y'all was just like, man, look, man, we're going to just pull this deuce and we're going to have some conversation. Exactly. And then we had Bleak on and he tried to bogart us and he became a host. Nah, he definitely looked like he bogarted y'all, though. Because he, he, even now, I think he, he opens not, the show. He, no, he didn't. Yeah, because he, <laughs> he likes doing that shit. He likes the attention. So He comes in like, what's up, man? Yeah. It's the Deuce Friday podcast, a.k.a. Memphis Bleak podcast, and these are my two co-hosts. No. Nah. <laughs> That's how you come on, man. But no, uh, no handouts. What, 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 one thing that you try to, uh, you try to, well, you definitely are building this brand on your own without, because of course you, we all know you're Jay Z nephew, right. but you're building this brand on your own, and you, and you, it's clear that you hold that true to your heart that you want to do this on your own. Right. 
But I hear, and I, I see this all the time, I hear you say, yes, listen, man, when I came in, I had to intern for Rock Nation. I didn't, um, Jay-Z ain't just give me a job. Right. You said I had to I had to get a job. You got fired before you came right. back. 100%. Still doing your thing. And then I hear this so much, and then I see the name. Let me get it right. Is that album or mixtape? I just want to get it right. It's an album. It's an album. I see the album, no handouts. And it's like everything leads back to this one thing, and that's like, one of, it's, to me, just honestly, watching from the outside, it's like you're trying to run away from this shadow because so many people trying to put you in it, but it's like you're doing it so much that it makes it all this kind of like, and honestly, like, I'm just, just I outside of looking at it like, yo, this nigga was my uncle, like, why not use those type of, those contexts? You still can be working and putting yourself on. No, it's a difference. When I say no handouts, I don't say, I don't say I don't use the contacts or shy away from it. Like, you just said it. I just answered it, right? If I shy away from it, I would have been like, I'm not his nephew. So when I say no handouts, I just mean in the sense of, you know, everything we do is on our own. You know, of course, it's people I met along the way over the years that I'll hit up and, you know, but when I say no handouts, I mean, like, nothing was given to me. Right, of course. Like, I didn't just walk in and say, yo, I need a job. When I actually told him I need a job when I graduated, he said, I can't do nothing for you. Like, that's literally what happened. That's literally why the whole mindset of no handouts started. Or even the fact that once I heard that, that's when I started my own management company. I was like, well, shit, ain't nothing out here. I'm going to just start my own shit and try to get some revenue off of that. Mm -hmm. And then I called um, Jay Brown and was like, yo, all right, I know ain't no jobs, but look, I need an internship so I can learn the business to take it back to what I got going on. And then that shit didn't work because I was literally, because I'm still there, I just you know shied away from my own business just to, um, and I'm still learning every day. Mm -hmm. So no handouts, you know, it just, it didn't, it's these guys, you know. Um, These guys is definitely working, put in that work. Right, without a handout. Like, they, they didn't have to come on it, so they worked for it. And then they decided, yo, I'm going to believe in his vision, and I'm going to travel the world with him and see, because it helps them. If you go to, if you're from Baltimore, you go to Memphis and perform, and you leave with one fan. There's one more that you didn't have more that you in didn't Memphis. Have. <laughs> in Memphis, and then that person play your shit in the car for that friend, and that friend, like, yo, this shit hard, and it's just a snowball effect. No, definitely. No, definitely, yeah. But again, even when, like you say, you talk to Jay and it's like just family, like it's no business. Never. That just, that to me makes no sense because it's like, you got Jay-Z, one of the biggest moguls on, in this world. He's there for it if I need it. If I'm like dire need, like, yo, I don't understand this shit, then I got it. But I also know other people within this industry that has just as much knowledge as him. You know, it's not like I'm saying we don't talk about shit at all. Right. I just said I don't get anything handed to me. No, thanks. Like, of course, if I... I actually seen you say we don't talk about business. We don't. It's rare. Unless I have a business question. When you around your family at Thanksgiving, you talk about business? My family not Jay-Z, though. If my family was... If my See, family, that's the thing. He's not Jay-Z to me. I mean, but we can't... Like, I get it, but, like, honestly, like, if, if, if... Even if... Let's say not Jay-Z, right? If my family was somebody that was... That was successful in business, right? Just, just, just me. If I, if I had a uh, guy that owned hypothetically Shoe City, if he was the uh, the CEO of Shoe City, created Shoe City, and I'm trying to create a business of my own, I'm talking to him like every day, if not every other day. And I get, I get what you're saying because, like, yo, that to me, that's uncle. Like, that ain't really. No, but talking is not a handout. That's what I'm trying to explain. Not definitely. No, we speak. Of course, if I have a business question or he asks me how the business is going, we'll talk about it. But I'm saying nothing was handed to me, like, the actual process of what we're doing. No, of course. If I be like, yo, how do you register a song or something like that or something business-wise, of course I'm going to get an answer, but I that just makes be sense. like, I didn't walk in the room and just say, hey, you're the CEO of Rockefeller. Like, Take this mail. Like Take that, bro. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> put your own, put your own <laughs> shit together. Right. No, nah, no, nah, definitely, man. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming to the city, man. We definitely I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I ain't a thing, man. I wanted to bring artists out. Uh, one last question, just for the artists. What makes you, because uh, you said all the artists don't travel with you, and I guess, like, I'm going to use a word. Like, I mean, no, they, I mean, they have the choice to, I mean, it's up to them, whatever they want to do. But so, we have, like, a couple artists that we made as featured artists that were traveling. How you become a, a feature artist? You just got to believe in the vision and actually want to, we, be, they became feature artists because they dedicated themselves to the tour and was like, fuck that, I'm going to take it upon myself to go to every city. So we was like, well, if that's what y'all want to do, we going to highlight it. No, definitely. Yo, I appreciate you, man. You are part of the culture. Um, in this, this oh, culture. And by the way, we are coming to Baltimore with the culture tour. 
Definitely. So we lit. Artists turn up. We gonna be we gonna be lit. Um, Sometime just before the summer. Hopefully, I can help or be a part of that, man. Um, yeah, so that man right there. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Cool, we're going to do that. Uh, I mean, we're going to make it work. Whatever we got to do to make it work, it's for them, man. It's for, it's for the artists. It's, it's definitely, a lot of times we get lost in it, just in this phony-ass industry. And, like, everybody got their own um, agenda and own motives. Instead of, you said, we're trying to hope everybody up. But it seemed like everybody's just trying to get their own, their own, own selves on. Right. Um, but enough of my questions, man. I want to say thank you. Uh, welcome, Jay-Z nephew. I mean, Ralph Carter. You know what I'm saying? CEO, founder of the Road Carter Culture Tour. Man, make sure all the artists, y'all ask some questions, man. We're going to open up to the artists. If you got any questions, you can ask them. And if you don't mind, you can just answer, all right? Ooh.